Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, today I wanted to do a little video for you about some of the fake silver that is showing up out there. And it is absolutely everywhere. And so we're going to be looking at some, uh, some bars, some American Eagles. We're going to look at some constitutional silver. And we're going to do some testing. So first off, we're going to do the magnet test. We're going to do a little visual inspection on these, compare a real one with a fake one. And then we're going to use my fancy uh, Sigma Analytics tester, um, Precious Metal Verifier, and we're going to do some testing with that. We're also going to do some ping tests, and uh, that's using a, a free app that you can get for your phone, and that works really, really well. Pretty cool. And then we're also going to do a total destruct acid test at the very end. So um, this stuff is showing up everywhere. It's on all the Chinese websites. Um, you'll see it on eBay. You'll see it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, you'll see this stuff everywhere. And some of the sellers will tell you it's fake and some of them won't. Um, and so all the items that uh, I am showing you today, I specifically bought knowing that they were fake so that I could do this video for you. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this video started and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and look at these bars. Now, we're going to be using a little neodymium magnet here. And if the magnet sticks, the bar is guaranteed to be fake, okay, because silver is not magnetic. So here we go. And you'll see that uh, all of these have stuck. So all of these are fake. Let me show you what we have here. So this one supposedly is an Engelhard. This is a good brand name, been around forever. This one supposedly is a Silver Town. And again, they've been around forever. Um, this bar is kind of a generic one. I, ha I think that Silver Town makes this one. Um, I see a lot of people selling these. And then this one is an American Precious Metal Exchange, supposedly. We're going to look at this one in detail because I buy a lot of stuff from App AppMax, American Precious Metal Exchange. And I've got a bunch of different bars. So we're going to use uh, one, of my, one of my new toys to show you uh, this one in detail. We're going to use my Sigma Metalytics tester here. And it's currently set for silver, 99.9% .9 pure. Um, so here's what happens. These are all real. This is a batch of 20 one ounce uh, bars. These came from Atmex directly. So I know they're real and I've already tested these obviously because I've got this new toy. Okay. And so you could see that, uh, that the, um, the zero shows up between these brackets and anywhere within there, it means that the sample is consistent with the metal signature for what's selected. So currently we have silver 99.9% .9 pure, but we can change that to um, something else like, you know, platinum, uh, gold, um, and so on. And we can also change the purity. So we can make that 99.9%. .9%. We can make it uh, three nine sterling silver and so on. So anyway, you select what you want and then uh, you select uh, whether you're going to use the external wand, which I have hooked up or the internal sensor and you press the run cal button. Okay. And that calibrates it. And then we're ready to do testing. So again, you see that the, uh, the zero is within those brackets, okay, on all of these. And now we're going to go over here and try the fake one, okay? Now, you see what happens. The zero is not within those brackets, and there's an arrow over here way to the side. Now, it could be on that side, could be on this side. What it means is that what we're measuring is, is not in the slightest consistent with uh, what it expects to see for um, the metal properties you have selected. Okay, so, and this also works for other um, sizes. You know, I have a bigger wand that works with, you know, large 10 ounce bars and, and so on. And there are smaller wands as well. So this is a neat device. It's kind of expensive. Um, they're running about 1100, 1150, something like that right now. But, uh, you know, worth it if you are 
collecting and stacking, you know, to be able to verify your stuff's real. So that's that's pretty darn handy. Next up, we have three eagles and a Canadian maple leaf. So let's do this real quick. And you'll see that all of these are bogus as well. And we're going to look at the eagles in detail, and we're also going to compare the with, um, you know, compare a real one with this Canadian maple leaf. Um, there's a security feature on here that is completely wrong. That's kind of funny. And the eagles all have some weird things with them. So this is going to be kind of a fun segment. What you're going to see here is there are these lines that radiate from the center out. And you see this font right here, the I, the II from Elizabeth II. Um, the eyes are almost the same thickness as those security lines. And so basically they disappear when you get at certain angles. You can't see those at all. In fact, you can't see the line here for the T and the H and the B and the I here um, under certain lighting. Okay. And over here, those security lines are way finer than over here. And so clearly these eyes pop right out um, because they're much wider than those security lines. Also, you notice some detail issues down here in the pearls and that kind of stuff. And this kind of looks like Fred Flintstone's wife. Uh, can't remember her name offhand, but uh, Wilma. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you here is that the sizes are incorrect. So to make the fake one heavier, they uh, made it a bigger diameter than the real one. So anyway, the backs are kind of, kind of a similar issue. There's a detail down here with this maple leaf that uh, shows up on the real one and it's very chunky and there's no detail and then of course you know the detail difference in the um, in the leaf i want to say a couple of things um, there are going to be a bunch of things that are the same between all the fakes and uh, i want to point out that they're trying to look like they're proofs where the background is very shiny and I don't buy proofs because I think they're overpriced. So uh, all of the ones I'm going to compare with have um, the standard kind of background on them. All right. Now, some of the things that are going to come out common on all of these is uh, things like a lack of detail, um, the flatness of the design it's it's not quite as three-dimensional you know it doesn't pop off of the coin like especially like a proof should um, the other thing is stuff like this take a look at the dates here and you can see that the font's not correct and it's not the correct size and so you know generally speaking look at this kind of detail in this area on the real one and the fake one and detail in the dress and up in this area as well. But what I wanted to show you was especially the back on these coins, okay? So on all of the eagles, when you take the coin and you take the head and make it go down, the eagle comes up, except for the fake one, <laughs> okay? Now on this particular one, it just happens to say copy up here. So that clearly is a good indication that that one's a fake. Here's the next one. And like I said, detail, fonts, all that kind of stuff on the front. Let's look at the back again, head down, eagle up. Oh, well, look at that. This one's wrong. Okay, but it gets even funnier. So here it says one ounce, one ounce fine silver and it says one dollar except it's actually spelled wrong d d l l a r uh so i don't know i don't know what to say about that uh, and the fonts and all that kind of stuff and the you know the detail on the eagle but um you know maybe misspelling that they're not trying to convince you that it's a dollar um Maybe that's how they get around that they're counterfeiting. I don't know. 
Here's the last eagle we're going to look at. Now, it says it's a 23. I'm going to compare it to a 22 because as of right now, I don't have any 23s. Okay, so the same kind of stuff on the front as all the rest of them. And here we're going to turn these upside down, head down, eagle up. Oh, well, look at that. This one has the wrong back. In 22, it would have looked like this. And uh, what makes it even funnier is, see it says one ounce fine silver, except it says one bolos. So uh, look that up on the web and s see if you can figure out what a bolos is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and weigh these quickly. So here's a real eagle and this is displaying Troy ounces and that's what it should be. And here are the fake ones. So you can see that all of these are underweight. And here's the last one. And now we're going to do um, the Canadian maple leaf. And you can see that's one troy ounce. And the fake one is not. Now we've got a batch of other coins. These are 90% silver. At least they're supposed to be. We're going to use this little tiny magnet again, and what you see is this little magnet doesn't stick to any of these. Okay, so even though it was sticking to those other ones, those other ones have a lot of metallic, um, you know, magnetic material in the composition. These apparently don't, or don't have much, and so this small magnet isn't going to do anything for you. So what I've done is I've got a big stack of magnets. Um, these are from hard drives. And when you, you know, put these together like this, the power increases. So this is really um, crazy amount of power. And the reason I didn't use this earlier is that if you get your finger in between, you know, one of those fake bars and this stack of magnets, it's like uh, putting your finger in a rat trap. It's really strong, okay? So let's go ahead and use this. And you see, yep, that one's fake. And this peace dollar, this one almost lifts off. Actually, it does if you get it just right. It's got to be perfectly centered. But anyway, that one is fake as well. Okay, and here is a Walking Liberty 50 cent piece and that sticks and here's a franklin 50 cent piece and you can see that one sticks as well and over here is a kennedy 50 cent piece and this one again you got to get it exactly right to be able to lift it completely but it does attract to the magnet so this is not silver okay now we're going to look at all that stuff in detail now here's a Morgan, and Morgans I, I didn't have in my collection. So the one on the right is a real one uh, that I bought at my local coin shop, uh, you know, just for the video. And when, you, when you're looking at these, I don't think it's coming over in this video, but uh, there is a, definitely a color difference between the two. And if you look at the portrait, you know, the chin's wrong, the lips are a little wrong, the nose is wrong, detail is kind of lacking in the fake one. Um, but, you know, if you saw that one at an estate sale or something, you might think that one's real. So um, let's look at the backside on these as well. And again, you know, it's pretty good. The fonts aren't quite right, I don't think. But, you know, and there's a lack of detail in the, uh, in the wings. But like I said, if you just if you just found that somewhere at a garage sale or something, you, you know, you might think that's real. So I guess having a magnet in your pocket's not a bad way to go. So here's one of my favorite designs, the the peace dollar. And so the one on the left is the fake, and it's kind of you know, it's lacking detail and the fonts are a little too wide and you know that kind of stuff. Um, it's almost like it's like out of focus or something, if that makes sense. Um, clearly, the detail is there on the real one. And, um, 
you know, the fake one, it's it's not there. And like I said, it, it's kind of like it's out of focus. Everything's a little wider than it should be. So like the beams coming off of the top of the head, you know, all of those are too wide um, as well as the fonts. So let's look at the back on this as well. And here we go. Again, you see how this is almost blurred, all of the lettering up here. And that's not really, you can't really explain that by saying that the coin's worn, okay? Because if that were worn enough to almost make the lettering go away, then this ridge would be gone. And it's not. So, you know, it's just another example of something that just is... You know, it's close enough that you might get fooled. I don't know. Um, that one kind of looked obvious to me. But uh, anyway, so we're going to do some more testing on this one. I want to show you some other methods that you can use. And this one's going to be a good example. Now we're going to do what's called a ping test. And I'm going to be using an app on my phone. This is a free app that you can get. Um, and I'm going to be using one of these. Now, this is something that I printed on my 3D printer, but I'll put a link where you can go and buy something like this. Basically, the idea is um, pure silver and 90% silver coins are going to put out a certain sound, okay? And you've heard people talk about this before, but uh, I've got a microphone set up here to capture this, so I'll be able to play this over and over for you. Um, and you'll be able to hear there's definitely a, a pitch difference, okay? The real one's going to have a different pitch than the fake one. And there are also some harmonics involved. And also the real one tends to ring kind of like a bell and it'll continue ringing for a long period of time. Okay, so the way this works is you select the coin. So we're going to do this, uh, this uh, peace dollar. And so you select the coin from the list, and let's see, where is that? Here we go. Okay, peace dollar. And that will come up in the next screen, okay? And then there's a button that says check. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to get this situated uh, so that the... The cell phone can pick up this audio and also this microphone. And when I press that button, check, then I have to stop talking completely. Okay, and we're going to see how this goes. Ready? Okay. Now, what you can see right here on the screen is it says zero out of three, bad. Okay, so it's analyzed this waveform. This is what it captured. Um, and it's analyzed that and it said, hey, that is not consistent with uh, a coin of this size, uh, with the 90% silver and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's looked that up in its own built-in library based on what you've selected. Okay, so we're going to take this one out. That's the fake one. And we're going to put this one in, and that's the real one. And, you know, you just center this in the tool, like yay, and then hold it in position and get your striker ready. And here we go. Silent. Okay. And you see here, three stars, three out of three. Great. Let's go ahead and test this Morgan. Now this one says that it's uh, an 18 something, 1870 something. So I've got this set for US pre 1900 and this is calibrated. And you can see that this is outside the, the brackets. Okay, um, now we're gonna test this fake 1921 change the setting here to pre-1945, recalibrate, okay, and then we'll test that one, and this one shows that it's way outside the, the brackets, okay, and we'll test the, the real ones. Now, this particular Morgan is a 21, so that's uh, for this kind of setting here, and we'll go ahead and test that, and that's within the brackets. That's the real one, and this one, the... Um, Peace dollar, that one's also a 1920s, and you see that that fits within those, 
those brackets, and that one's real as well. This one kind of surprised me, okay? The one on the left is the fake, and the one on the right is the real one, and that's actually the best of the Walking Liberty uh, half dollars that I have. You know, most of mine came with a bunch of junk silver, so... Um, that one's pretty impressive. That might have got me. And, you know, when you're looking at them in daylight, there is a color difference between them. Um, but it's, you know, this one might have got me. So let me show you the backside on these. And the backside is equally as impressive. Um, you know, so I'm just going to leave this up on the screen and you guys can take a look at this one. So here's another one that's just so obviously wrong. Um, you know, the one on the left is the fake, and the shape of the head is completely wrong, and details about the hair and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you look at that, and it looks like the guy on the left, you know, was chasing parked cars or something. Uh, the face is all kind of smooshed in in the front, and it's just the wrong size and shape. So anyway... Um, that's about it on that one, except I also wanted to show you one thing. The thickness is completely incorrect on the fake one, and it's because they tried to get the weight up on this. Um, but, you know, that's another thing to look at compared to the real one, and you can also see that it's a little bigger diameter than the real one. Let's look at the Kennedy. So the real one's on the right, the fake one's on the left, and just looking at the hair, you can tell that the uh, left one is fake, lack of detail and all that kind of stuff. But you can also tell that that face is wrong. I mean, that whole portrait is wrong. It uh, looks very cartoony, uh, kind of like Fred Flintstones. And you can spot other stuff, but uh, this one's real obvious. Now we're going to do some acid testing. I wanted to show you uh, what colors we get with some different metals. Okay, so we're going to be using this silver test solution here. And we have three items here. We have a penny, a pure copper penny from pre-1980. We have a seated Liberty dime uh, from the 1800s. And then we have this little um, 999 pure silver test bar. That's a little five grain bar. So when we put this acid on here, we should get different colors. And um, the pure silver, we should see something that's very red. On the 90% silver, we should see sort of a reddish brown. And on the copper, we should see something in the kind of green uh, kind of range. So first off, we'll put some on this uh, 999 bar down here. And there we go. We'll get some over on this 90% silver and over on the copper. And let's see what colors we get. And this will take just a little while. So we may have to just kind of pause and wait. But already you can see that this is very red, and you can see that this is a reddish brown, and this is going to take a little bit more time, but from this angle I can see that that's, uh, that's got a green color to it. There we go. You can see the green over on the penny a little better now, and the red is very clearly red, and that reddish brown is pretty clearly reddish brown. Now we're going to do a total destruct test on everything you've seen in the video. So we're going to be using some acid. Um, this is a silver test solution. We're going to be putting it on the shiny surface, but we're also going to be putting it on the substrate. Now, I have taken everything that you've seen, and I've put it in my mill, and I've cut a slot. Okay, And I've done that with... Like I said, everything that you've seen so far. Now, what I discovered was when I was milling this, I could see a very fine layer of something that looked like copper. And so I had another one of these that I'd been messing with before I started this video. And I took on the back side some sandpaper to that. And look at what I found. That's copper, if you can see that. So this appears to be steel that has been copper coated or copper plated and then I think they chrome plated the outside and that this isn't even silver um, here and I think that's how they got this really high gloss so anyway we're gonna test that theory um, with the acid 
Now, these other ones, the constitutional silver, what I found was um, the substrate is actually a yellow metal. So it kind of looks like brass to me. Now, brass is made of a high percentage of copper with some zinc. Um, I don't know if there's something else in this composition. It doesn't really matter. But this acid should um, show the copper content tent in what I believe is brass. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on this end. We're going to just go ahead and uh, get the acid going. There we go. And here it goes. So we'll do substrate. And I don't know really what's going to happen on the substrate because it's, it's uh, I believe it's steel, so I don't know what, the, what it's really going to do. But, okay, and here are the eagles. And we're just going to get a drop on all of this stuff, one or two, because I'm not very steady. Okay. And then we'll get over here onto the constitutional silver, get that to focus. Hopefully that'll focus. And here we go. Okay, now let's go back to the first batch and see if we see any color. Okay, now we're already starting to see um, some green here, and that really means copper. So let's see if I gotta move this light around a little bit for you to be able to see that. Yeah, here you can see that here and here, and it's beginning there. So we'll just move down to the next batch and see if this will focus. There we go. Not much going on with these. You see a little bit of green on this one. So we'll just give that a little bit more time. Down here, we're definitely seeing green in the substrate. Um, and green is beginning to appear on these two and on this one, barely on this one. And it's not really doing anything on there. So we'll just keep Looking at this, we'll just go back and forth until we see something that really is obvious. Um, more green, more green on all of these. See if this helps a little bit. Um, I'm definitely seeing green. It's kind of coming out blue-green on your screen, but uh, the surface is definitely getting down into that copper layer. Okay, and we'll move on to these. Look at that again. Okay, definitely green on, on all of these, on the eagles. And this Canadian one, oddly enough, is not really doing anything yet. So we're just going to let that go for a lot longer. And here, definitely you see the green there on all of those except for the uh, peace dollar. I do see some green beginning to show on the surface. It's definitely green inside there on the base metal. Whoops, and there we go. Okay, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just pause this and we will come back to it. Now it's been several minutes and you can see that the substrate is basically black. And these have all turned black, except this one. This one's still got a little bit of green here. Um, but it looks like it's gone through the outer layer, the chrome, through the copper, and now it's into the substrate because this color and this color is the same. Okay, and it's pretty much done that with these as well. There we go. Um, it's gone right through the outer layers into the substrate now. And uh, down here on the constitutional silver, um, you see pretty much everything is green. This one up here is actually still a little on the yellow side, but it's, uh, it's definitely turning green as well. So we have green on all the surfaces and on the substrate. So I guess the moral of the story is to buy from a reputable dealer. For the Epicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.